What do you get when you take all the fun and gameplay of the awesome Donkey Kong Country games, add in the same Silicon graphic technology and enemies and squeeze it into an 8-bit cartridge, you get the Donkey Kong Land series which, in my opinion, are the best and most addictive Game Boy games of all time. Rare was having massive success with their smash hit Kong series on the Super Nintendo and wanted to expand the franchise by trying to create games of a similar vibe for the Game Boy, which in the mid to late 90s was starting to fade away. It was felt by many that everything that could be done to try and push the Game Boy as far as possible had been done, until developers Rare started to try and use the same high-tech graphics and pre-rendered backgrounds on the monochrome system and created the Donkey Kong Land series which showcased some of the best graphics and gameplay ever seen on the black and white handheld. Whilst the first game in the series was quite far removed from the first country game, the second and third games were pushed to try and look and feel as much as their SNES counterparts as was possible. With the third country game being one of the best looking games for the SNES which again was being superseded by the emerging Nintendo 64, Rare decided to have one last hurrah and finish the Game Boy series off in style by creating a final land game which again borrowed some elements from the SNES but took things in a slightly different direction. Whilst Donkey Kong Country 3 had amazing platforming action, it fused this together with some awesome RPG elements which had the Kongs having to go back and forth trading with the Brothers Bear and other characters to access secrets and to advance further in the game. Donkey Kong Land 3 stars the heroes of that game Dixie Kong and Kiddy, who are fresh from rescuing Donkey and Diddy from Baron K. Rule and Stein aka King K. Rule and they once again must travel the Northern Kremisphere and put a stop to the evil King of the Kremlins in a race to find the Lost World. The game is a lot more linear than DKC3 in that the Kongs must visit each world, complete each level and rinse them for bonus coins and DK coins which are again hidden on each level. There are no items that must be traded to progress, instead there's a lone bear in each world who has a shop and Dixie and Kitty have the chance to win a watch piece by playing a game of cards with the objective being to match all pairs within a certain amount of time. All six must be won in order to be able to access the hidden lost world and unfortunately the Kongs must collect bear coins to try and pay the bear to either play cards, reveal hints about secrets on a level or teleport to another world provided they have made some progress. So Donkey Kong Land 3 is another collector bomb game and at times does feel like an extra set of Donkey Kong Country 3 levels for the Game Boy which is no bad thing. So grab yourself a cup of tea and some bananas, settle in and let's retrospectively explore Donkey Kong Land 3. Video Game Story the inhabitants of DK Island are buzzing with excitement thanks to a contest that has been announced to find a legendary lost world in the Northern Hemisphere. It has remained hidden for centuries and as of yet no one has been able to find its location. Everybody that's anybody including Donkey and Diddy Kong have set off to try and find it. That is except Dixie Kong who has been solidly looking after toddler Kitty, meaning that she is unable to enter the contest herself. Dixie felt really frustrated that no one had even entertained the thought that she should enter and felt that after working hard to rescue Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong in the third country game as well as teaming with Diddy to defeat K. Rool in the second country and man game, she feels she is every bit as good as they are and deserves to be part of the contest. Whilst walking with Kitty in the jungle, Dixie decides that she will enter the contest anyway and decides to take Kitty with her. So Dixie and toddler Kitty head off into the jungle to start a brand new adventure and so begins Donkey Kong Land 3 for the Game Boy. Gameplay Donkey Kong Land 3 is a 2D platform game in which the player assumes control of Dixie and Kitty Kong as they travel across 6 all new areas of the Northern Hemisphere. You can select between the two Kongs at any time during a level provided you have found a DK barrel. Just like in previous games, both Dixie and Kitty have slightly different attributes and manoeuvres which must be utilised to get through each level effectively, whilst also avoiding or defeating the wave of Kremlin baddies awaiting our heroes on each level. Donkey Kong Country 3 allowed you to team up with both Kongs and use them to throw each other to reach hidden bonuses or to defeat enemies. As this is the Game Boy, there are no double team moves, but you will have to select between our heroes to get through some of the game's tricky hazards at times. Dixie Kong is the main character and can move extremely fast when she runs. Her main method of attack is her ponytail which she can use to whip enemies off the screen and she can jump on certain enemies heads to wipe them out. 
When Dixie jumps and provided the jump button is pressed again, she can hover, meaning that she can reach certain parts of the stage that Kitty might not be able to or may struggle trying to get there. She can also use this ability to bypass some dangerous sections of a level and makes navigating the many levels a lot of fun. She also has the ability to swim as well as pick up and throw barrels to take out some enemies. As she is only small, she is unable to take on some of the larger baddies but controls extremely well and anyone who has played Donkey Kong Land 2, Donkey Kong Country 2 or even 3 will feel right at home here. Kitty Kong is the second playable character and plays just like he did in Donkey Kong Country 3. Kitty may be lumbering, but he has some serious strength for a little toddler. He can roll into certain enemies, jump on their heads and can jump slightly higher if he rolls and then jumps. Like Dixie, he can swim, use battles dotted around the place to smash the enemies and take out larger foes that Dixie cannot. Players always have two hit points when they have found their partner in a DK barrel. If either Dixie or Kitty take a hit, then that character is lost and the player must carry on solo until they reach another DK barrel or lose a life. A life is lost when both characters have taken damage. Lives are once again represented in the Donkey Kong Land tradition at the bottom of the screen as hearts. By collecting 100 bananas or an extra life balloon, the total increases. Lose all lives and it's game over and the Kongs must try again from a previous saved game. Once again, Rare have ported some animal buddies across to the Game Boy to help the chimps in their quest. Unlike the last game which had 5 animal buddies to control, Donkey Kong Land 3 only has 4. Animal buddies can be used on any level where you see a barrel with an animal icon on. Simply jump into it and you will be transformed into whoever's symbol is on the barrel. When you have been transformed into an animal buddy, the same rules apply in that you can only be hit twice before losing a life. If you find another DK barrel or animal barrel then this will restore a hit point if you have lost one. Squawks the parrot returns and controls the same as he did in previous games. He can fly high in any direction and is now able to throw an endless supply of nuts at the enemies, clearing a path to progress further and is essential for finding bonuses that Dixie and Kitty cannot reach on their own. Everyone's favourite spider, Squitter, joins the Donkey Kong Land 3 adventure and once again uses his webs against any enemy in his way and can even create web platforms which help to get to previously inaccessible areas of a level and to get to those hard to reach bonus rooms. He is quite nifty but can't swim and can be extremely vulnerable, still he is a force to be reckoned with and is one of my favourite animal buddies. What would a Donkey Kong Land game be without On Guard the Swordfish? The pointy-nosed fish resides in the many aquatic water levels that the Kongs have to traverse. He can take out baddies with the greatest of ease and can swim quite fast. However, some enemies must be taken out accurately as going gung-ho on the baddies may result in On Guard losing a hit point or life. This is his fifth appearance in the DK game, so he is essentially a veteran of the series and is once again ready to dole out some damage. Finally, last but not least is Ellie the Elephant who makes her Game Boy debut here. Unlike Donkey Kong Country 3, Ellie is not afraid of mice and has an endless supply of water meaning you can attack to your heart's content. I think the reason Rare went this route with Ellie was because of hardware limitations and the extra animation of Ellie running from mice may have provided to be quite difficult to replicate on a Game Boy screen. Still, she can jump on enemies and looks so cute as she gallops across the level. Unfortunately, Rare didn't include Parry the Pigeon, who was instrumental in Donkey Kong Country 3 for finding bonuses that were high up, but still a very good selection to help the fight against the Kremlin Hordes. As I mentioned earlier, Donkey Kong Land 3's levels are littered with bananas to collect, extra lives and feature many hidden bonus rooms to find. In each of these rooms, a mini challenge has to be overcome, in which the Kongs or Animal Buddy must try and locate the hidden bonus coin. The challenges are either find the coin, defeat the enemies or collect the stars. With each bonus room having you contend with baddies whilst you try and beat the challenge in the time limit, it can be quite difficult. So why are bonus coins so important? Well, on each world is a shop containing a bear, not unlike the last game. You must have a certain amount of bonus coins to have the chance to play cards and match the various characters and items. Should you win the card game, then you earn a DK coin and a watch piece, which when combined are essential for when you reach the Lost World. Oddly enough, you don't pay the bear in bonus coins. The first time you find a bear, 
and provided you have the required amount of bonus coins, you play for free. If you fail the card game, then you must pay the bear in bear coins which are scattered on every level. Very confusing indeed. Bear coins are the currency that Kongs use to pay for hints as to the whereabouts of bonus rooms and teleportation to other worlds. As the Kongs reach each new world, the required amount of bonus coins needed to play increases. So really the bonus coins are an indicator of how good a player you are and the more you have means that you have earned the right to play the card game. Unfortunately, Funky Kong is not present on the Game Boy and the only other Kong family member making a return on the map screen is Wrinkly who has a save cave on each world. It is here that Dix and Kitty can save their current progress for free this time round. The levels in Donkey Kong Land 3 are once again based off the third country game and use the same level templates and aesthetics, however these levels are brand new and really push the Game Boy a lot harder to try to recreate the look of the 16-bit game. Although this game is clearly 8-bit, developers Rare have really upped the look and feel of the game with pretty much every enemy you fought on the SNES present and just as badass as ever. At times Donkey Kong Land 3 feels like an expansion pack of brand new levels from DKC3 and it's incredible how large each one can be with each level swapping environments pretty quickly, one level you're fighting on the docks while the next you're thrust into a beautiful underwater level full of dangerous aquatic baddies who despite being in 8 bits still pack a hell of a punch so it does borrow a lot of elements but mixes them up quite well so you're never quite sure what's coming next. As well as trying to hunt down all the hidden bonus rooms in the game, there's a DK coin hidden on every level and this time apart from the underwater levels they are guarded by a lone Kremlin who has a helmet and a shield, funnily enough his name is Coin with a K. The Kongs need to find a barrel and throw it over him where it needs to roll into him as you cannot hit him when he's facing you. Take him out and the DK coin is automatically added to your total. All 42 DK coins are required in order to face K Rool for the very last time, so if you want to see everything, it's imperative to rinse every level. Thankfully, unlike Donkey Kong Country 3, Coin isn't that challenging and it's very easy to beat him even on the later stages. In fact, you can throw the barrel at nothing and it will still roll towards him. Most of the time, Coin is in plain sight, and I do wish that Rare could have perhaps made him a little harder to find and tougher to kill, but it's no big deal as the huge challenging levels more than make up for this. So Dixie and Kitty will have one heck of an adventure as they visit these amazing new worlds whilst also being kept on their toes. Now it's on to the bosses. At the end of each world, Dixie and Kitty must face one of six bosses that appeared in Donkey Kong Country 3. Rare have given them some new attack patterns and they look incredible on an 8-bit handheld, although some look a little smaller and less detailed. You have to look very closely to see that a lot of effort has gone into trying to faithfully recreate them as best as they could using the limited hardware. Unfortunately, Belcher didn't make the cut, and maybe Rare didn't feel he was a strong enough character to bring back. Still, there is a strong cast of bosses ready to try and stop the Kongs in their tracks. First on the list we have Barbos who waits for the monkeys in the first world and once again fires projectiles. Dixie and Kitty cannot fight this guy without the help of On Guard and so must use his pointy nose to prod the projectiles into the prickly boss's face. It can be extremely awkward as you must be quite exact when trying this manoeuvre as if you're a millisecond off when you lose a hit point or a life. Bleak the Snowman is on World 2 and once again fires a succession of snowballs from his hat at varying speeds and altitudes. The only way to beat him is to wait for a break in the pattern. At this point a lone barrel will appear on top of the hut, grab it and quickly throw it at him. I did find Bleak quite intimidating at first but he's no way near as hard as he was on DKC3 which I was very thankful for, a very cool boss indeed. A Rick, the poisonous spider, blocks your path on World 3 and is quite challenging. He darts up and down across the screen firing little projectiles full of venom that will do some serious damage, so you must jump out of their way if you can. Not to mention that when the menacing arachnid dives on you and this can cause major frustration. The key to beating a Rick is waiting until he's thrown out all that venom and timing it just right so that when he dives down you can bounce off his head. This can be very tricky because the first time I faced him I didn't know where he was going to dive down and I lost a fair few lives. Basically you just need to learn his pattern and once you do he becomes a cinch to take down. 
halting you in your tracks on World 4 is Chaos. Yes, that's right, K. Rool has once again sent his creation to try and wipe out the Kongs once and for all. To be honest, the only difficult thing about this boss is that he moves back and forth menacingly and will at times produce metal blades in which the objective is to stand on them and then jump on his metal bonds. However, this is made more difficult as dual boxing gloves are being produced from either side of him knocking you off, so you have to time it carefully. After taking several hits, he just kind of lingers on screen and then disappears leaving you to celebrate your victory. Video Game Presentation what can I say about the graphics, they are just some of the finest sprites I have ever seen on a Game Boy screen. Although the 8-bit system can't fully replicate the full graphical extravaganza of a Donkey Kong Country game, to me that does not matter because every level although stripped down slightly looks amazing and gives it immense charm. Although this can come at a cost, as some levels despite being quite detailed and advanced for a Game Boy title, meaning on some levels Dixie and Kitty can blend it to the background and this means they can be very hard to spot sometimes, the same as some of the Kremlin nasties you encounter. Honestly, I couldn't see most of the time, until it was too late. This happened numerous times on the snow levels and on the waterfall levels. I understand that Rare changed many of the level palettes to create some differentiation between each other, so some levels are lighter whilst others are darker. I don't understand why this is and why they couldn't have just kept a lighter colour palette, which is slightly easier on the eyes. It's only a small gripe and doesn't make the game wholly unplayable at all, but just slightly difficult at times. The two Kongs control just brilliantly with each of them having their individual signature moves and this third land game does feel as if the Kongs move a little quicker and it's easier to see how much work has gone into the many levels that must be beaten. The underwater levels are just beautiful, large and sparse and rich in detail and are my favourite thing about the game. I also do feel that the bonus rooms are much easier to find in this game and I didn't have any problems tracking them all down. This was despite some being totally invisible on some levels. But I will say that this game is perfect for younger players as the difficulty spike is just right with some bonuses just hiding in plain sight. The in-game camera is much improved now meaning that the game won't just simply kill you off if you are climbing up through a level. I've had occasions where I was high up in the waterfalls and slipped off falling back down through the level. However, despite free falling, the game didn't just treat it like a death and kill me off if there was a platform there to break my fall. So the game is a lot fairer, meaning that I didn't mind dying because if I fell and there wasn't a platform to break my fall, then I died by my own hand and this was totally fine with me. The bosses are another issue, again it's really cool that Rare ported them over to the Game Boy but they don't really pose any challenge whatsoever with a Rick being the hardest in my opinion and K. Rool which I will get to being way easier than ever. So I will say you may die a couple of times but honestly they are more intimidating than they look and their bark is far worse than their bite, you just have to learn their patterns. One thing I would have liked to see is perhaps having some different brothers bears in each world. It's literally the same one and his name is Bear. I mean given that Rare introduced them and showed so much effort in their presentation in the third country game, it's a shame that they couldn't put a few in. I am guessing that one of the reasons could have been to cartridge limitations so having one bear does kind of make sense but why not just make it barter or brash or any of them. This bear allows you to play the card game, will give you hints as to the whereabouts of bonus rooms for bear coins and will even teleport you across worlds you have already completed so he is kind of like a one stop shop. Honestly I know it feels like I'm bashing this game, I think it's one of Rare's best ever but as awesome as the whole game is I just really think that things are really uneven. The storyline in which Dixie and Kitty are entering a contest to find the fabled Lost World is only mentioned in the manual and not really in the game itself and when you do find it, don't get me wrong, these are some awesome levels but they don't feel as difficult as they could be and just kind of feel bolted on. It's hard to say these things but it's such an epic game but I will say that Donkey Kong Land 2's Lost World levels are easier. But even levels in other worlds in that game, such as Creme Cauldron, are much in my opinion harder in comparison to the third land game's batch of hidden levels in The Lost World. But please don't let my gripes with this game put you off playing, because the play experience is just so worth it and it's a solid platforming game. Final Boss, Video Game Ending after beating and rinsing the levels in the final world, Tin Can Valley, it's time to face Baron K. Rolenstein, the game's main antagonist. 
Unlike Donkey Kong Country 3, the battle does not take place in his lab this time, but in an underground pipe section. The demented Kremlin has brought his jetpack with him and starts to whiz back and forth, throwing out bolts of electricity at our heroes. At first it's a simple pattern of just one bolt. All you need to do is avoid it, and then a barrel appears and you can either throw it at him if you're Kitty, or even just run into him with a barrel if you're Dixie. This causes K. Rule to start bouncing up and down, moving back and forth, so you need to time it so you go under him and move out of his way a few times. His next wave of electricity comes in two lots of three from both sides of the screen. They are all at varying altitudes and need to be avoided as a single hit will cause you to lose a hit point or a life. Again, a barrel will appear, grab it and throw it at K. Rule to land your second hit. Again he will start bouncing, so be sure to move carefully as you prepare for his third attack. He will throw out three single bolts fast. As you avoid them, grab the barrel and whack him hard. You know the drill by now, K. Rule has more bounce than a basketball. Once you avoid this lunging, he then throws out another three bolts with one more for good measure. The fourth bolt is always high up, so remember that once you have avoided the first three, stay on the ground as you don't want him to take you out of the game. Move to the other side of the screen, where he will repeat this deadly attack. Once the barrel appears, throw it at him and he is toast, and that must be one of the easiest boss encounters ever. Granted his bolts might throw you off somewhat, but it's all about memorization. After this, K. Rule flees to the Lost World and you get a lengthy credit screen for your troubles, which is okay, but I don't get why they just show a fade to black showcasing the enemies when they could have done a cool roll call like in Donkey Kong Land 2. Still, it's okay. Once you start up the game again, you gain access to the Lost World with a message from K. Rule bragging about how you will never catch him. Well, you must enter the Lost World and ensure you have collected every DK coin as this is the only way to fight him in this secret world. Also, there is another card game to beat with a final watch piece. The bear won't let you play cards until you have acquired all 77 bonus coins throughout the game. Once this is done and you have also rinsed the Lost World, it's time for a second boss fight with K. Rule, who challenges you to come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. The battle now takes place on a very small cliff, with K. Rule immediately lunging towards our heroes with his uber cool jetpack. This time he's upped his arsenal of gadgets and now throws devastating bombs to try and blast you off the screen. His first array of bombs shouldn't trouble you, and you just have to endure a simple first attack, which occurs once again on both sides of the screen in turn. Once K. Rule has finished, pick up the barrel and hurl it at him to gain your first hit. His second attack is a bit more vicious as he chucks out a cluster of bombs which are very intimidating and what makes matters worse is that with the playing field being so small it's so easy to slip off whilst avoiding him. Not only that but it's so easy to run into him and take unnecessary damage so it's a lot harder than the last encounter. So just avoid his dual bomb attacks, grab the barrel and hit him a second time. He will once again lunge at you before throwing 6 bolts of electricity from one side and then repeats this pattern on the other, so all in all that's a total of 12 to avoid. If you manage to successfully do this, whack him with the barrel and prepare for the final attack. He will then vary his attack while throwing bombs at you on one side and then combining this with electricity on the other side of the screen. After you hit him he goes on a mini rampage trying to throw bombs at you from both sides. You need to just somehow keep out of his way while he does this. You just gotta wait it out and this is easier said than done. After a few seconds he then flies off and you will get the 78th coin. Now I'm so sorry to say this but the game is not over yet. K. 
Hyrule then admits defeat and hands you all 6 of the watch pieces you have collected and challenges you to beat 12 levels you have already played in the fastest time possible. Now I will say that this is a cool idea and I really did find it very frustrating trying to rush through dying time and time again. So kudos to Rare for throwing it in. You really need to be on point in the time trial as the game does not give you any room for error. To make things easier there are a few sneaky shortcuts you can take which will shave a few precious seconds off but this is no walk in the park particularly when you're up against the clock. After beating all the levels I was expecting a third K roll encounter but all you get is a screen and a trophy saying congratulations. I was absolutely gutted because I wanted at least a satisfying ending to complement the hard work I'd just pull in. So I even re-entered the game and decided to see if there was anything extra by beating him again in the lost world. The only difference is that the message changes with K. Roll saying that it's double or nothing and you must return there with all 6 watch pieces and coins. Well I already had them, so I defeated him again and the game just took you back into the time trial. So you don't get anything extra and the whole thing is just an endless loop. I was extremely disappointed and felt that Rare didn't deliver on a proper reward. I kind of feel like it just doesn't make any sense and there's no kind of indication as to the contest winning it or anything which kind of makes the story a little redundant and very confusing. Final thoughts Ok so this is one of the best Donkey Kong Land games I have ever played and I know I've had my issues with it but this is a fantastic 8 bit platform game that you simply have to play. In my opinion it is one of Rare's best and most detailed offerings to date in the series and packs tons of fun with some awesomely constructed levels and enemies. Although I do take issue with the ending not really making much sense, this is still well worthy of your attention. I really enjoyed playing for the game again and again and it has lots of replay value and it just made me smile at how good everything looks, sounds and plays. Ok so with that being said I give this game a 4.3 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for another retrospective review. If you like my videos please take time to comment, like and subscribe to support the channel, keep checking for new retro content and please don't forget to give me some feedback and I'll see you next time for another retrospective review, take it easy and I'll see you soon.